Now that we understand Bloch's theorem, we can immediately apply that to talk about bonding between atoms in neighboring cells, because now we can represent the wave function around those atoms. And the simplest way to do this is to think about a uh, tight binding model. And we know with a tight binding model, we're treating our unit cell, and again, this is just going to be a one-dimensional crystal. If I have a, a one-dimensional crystal with an atom here, and I have another atom here, another atom here, the spacing between those atoms is A, the lattice vector. We'll treat this as an S valent uh, orbital. You can imagine this as, you know, a, a chain of, heal of uh, hydrogen atoms or a chain of, of uh, lithium atoms. Uh, but then we want to be able to express the total wave function of the bonded system uh, in terms of the uh, atoms present. And we're just going to be considering nearest neighbor interactions. So we'll have our nearest neighbor atoms being considered. So let's, let's write this out. like this. And this will be our uh, wave function in the unicell and then the wave functions in the neighboring cells with the uh, phase change to be in the plus A or the minus A uh, separation. Okay, so we can write this H And if we take and we hit the left side with we hit the left side with uh, psi one star and integrate both sides of this, of course. using two. This is going to give us equal to
to. Okay, so I give us this. Distributing our integral and uh, psi 1 star through the equation. This first term is going to be C1 E0, the bare energy on the atom. This second term becomes C2 E to the I Ka plus E to the minus I Ka beta, where beta is our uh, uh, hopping integral. Uh, again, this is following up from the previous lecture on tight binding methods. The first term on the right hand side becomes E C1 using the normalization. And the last term goes to zero due to orthonormality. So this is going to give us the equation C1 E0 plus C2 E to the I K A plus E to the minus I K A beta C1. Okay, and now we can do exactly the same, this time hitting the equation with the integral psi 2 star. And if we do that, we get the equation C1 beta plus C2 e to the i k uh, a plus e to the minus i k a e0 is equal to e C2 e to the i k a plus e to the minus i k a. Get these two equations. Okay. Now, we're going to do two things here. First, we're going to uh, make a substitution, uh, recognizing that e to the i, oops, the wrong color. Looking for the uh, black marker, recognize that e to the i k a plus e to the minus i k a is equal to uh, 2 cosine k a. So that will change this, this, and this. And then collecting our coefficients here, here, and here, we can get this as a matrix problem And this is very clearly an eigenvalue uh, problem in which our eigenvalues are going to be 
E, and for each corresponding eigenvalue, we get an eigenvector, which is a set of, of C's. Now, we can solve this. And solving this brings us to E is equal to 1 half E0 plus 4 E0 cosine Ka plus or minus. So we get both of our eigenvalues here. 8 E0 squared plus beta squared cosine Ka plus E0 squared 9 plus 8 times 2 Ka one half. So this term here is all inside of a square root. Um, now, uh, so these are our two eigenfunctions, and our eigenfunctions, as notable, are now, our eigenvalues, are now indexed by the value of k. And this value of k ranges from minus 2 pi to 2 pi, uh, sorry, from minus pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Uh, solving this is a bear. I think I've done this once in my life. If you put this in Mathematica and you say eigen system or eigen value, it, it takes less than a second to, to solve this problem. In fact, you can take this and you can include p states as well if you want. And again, it's still less than a second to solve. Uh, do, you know, look for these tools in your life. They will save you a, a lot of uh, hardship. Well, let's look at these. Let's look at these. We know because we're talking about overlap between two s orbitals, which are positive, and a uh, negative potential, that beta must be less than zero. We also know that because we're talking about bound states, and uh, we set zero to be our uh, the point where the potential is always below zero, that E0 must also be less than zero. And if we take and plot E as a function of K for just different values of beta and E0, uh, and then of course setting A to something constant, I, I I just chose, I think it was 1, and then I just plotted everything uh, uh, 1 over pi. But you will get solutions that do this. E k, call this uh, pi over a. One of your eigenvalues do this. And the other eigenvalue, well, sorry, I know green doesn't show up very well. Let's put blue instead. Do this. And the other eigenvalue will do this.
the the magnitude the magnitude of the uh, the breadth here. I mean, this looks I mean, it's probably pretty clear to you. This this looks a lot like. something that has this, uh, the, the magnitude of this uh, cosine uh, is given by uh, E0, so you can manipulate that. Uh, the periodicity is given by the A value you put in, and then this beta value, that beta value determines the degree of splitting you get there. So essentially what we've created is we've created uh, when you uh, make beta increasingly smaller, you wind up with something that looks like this. I mean like the gap you know shrinks. But as you open up beta making the the amplitude of beta larger, you get more splitting in your bands. So an immediate implication of having Bloch's Law uh, available is that it allows us to create a tight binding model that will give us uh, bands. And these bands are, are actually extremely important because in, in the case of uh, the properties of electrons in solids, the properties are not static, but depend on, static isn't the exact word, they, they are static, but they are uh, dependent on the dispersion relations, how E changes with K. Uh, and this is important in particular for uh, the electrical properties because the, uh, the curvature of the bands at a given K point uh, give us the, uh, the mass of the electron as it travels in this crystal.